understanding and wisdom. You can check out this broadcast a number of ways. You can hit us up on KUAW.org. You can go to Twitter, Twitch, uh, Periscope, Facebook, Live, YouTube, RoQ, I believe, and type in KUAW and we'll pop right up. You can also hit us up on TuneIn Radio, too. Type in KUAW as well. KUAW Radio and we'll pop right up, too. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can call 816-599-6893. It is good to be back. Had a long track season, and now I'm back on Tuesdays. A lot of the shows you all have been seeing were old shows. <laughs> so uh, I want to thank you all for being patient and, and actually watching and sharing uh, the, uh, my older clips. Uh, it kind of tripped me out when I saw people commenting on an old show, and I'm like, Wow, people are still loving this. So um, I want to give a, a big shout out to all the supporters of the Source of the Inkwell. Uh, this has been, wow, uh, how many years? I think I, close to seven years in June that I've been on KUAW. Um, or wait a minute, it might be, might be, six, might be six years. Yeah, because I think I came in, see my son is seven. Fifteen. And my son was born at 15, so s six years. Okay. Yeah. No? Yeah. That'd be seven. Seven. Paul was he? Paul seven. Uh, he was a baby. Yeah, he was a baby when I started. You were six going on seven. Six going on seven. So it'll be seven years in June that I've been with KUAW. So I've been on KUAW longer than most people be on their jobs. And uh, it's been it's been a, a real good seven years. Um I think I might do a special show. So I think it, it, it was what it was June when I started, right? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. I think it was sometime in June. So next month will be seven years with KUAW. So that's a huge accomplishment. So I want to thank everyone that's been rocking with me ever since. Um, so yes, I've been coaching track and I've been uh, doing sports for the duration of March. Uh, April and May, so you saw a lot of tapes. And with saying that, teachers, we do more than just teach. Uh, you know, a lot of us coach, we do after school activities, before school activities. Uh, we deal with um, uh, school ins and outs, parents, activities, everything. And people keep saying, well, you know, man, you know, being a teacher, that's, that's the job, that's the job, because you get the weekends and the summers off. Well, yeah, we do. But you got to think about it, though. What teachers have to do, you know, we do get our summers off. And sometimes teachers do do summer school or other jobs to add more to their income. But you got to think about this, though. A lot of teachers, what you all get to do throughout an entire school year, we got to cram in all of our doctor's appointments, uh, a major adulting, everything within two months, two and a half months. And that's a lot. So we got to get all that stuff done within like two and a half months. Also, um, a lot of us who are adults, you get to go to the restroom when you want to. Teachers can't do that. I can't just get up and go use the restroom when I feel like it. I got to send an email or find someone to come and cover my class. Mm. Also, when it comes to that, you all get lunch breaks. We don't get lunch breaks. My lunch break is 20 minutes, and within that 20 minutes time, um, I'm heating up my food. By the time I sit down, I got that much time to eat. And then some teachers got to decide, well, do I go to the restroom or do I eat during my 20-minute lunch break? And then, of course, we have plan periods. Now, your plan period is supposed to be that time where you sit down and take a break and plan. Well, it really is not a full-out break for real because now you got people who don't like coming to work, and we got to cover people's time. So I have a lot of colleagues who we don't – what's the word I'm looking for? We don't have that time because we're covering other people's time. I have a friend of mine. He's, he's actually covered people's assignments for, what, over 20-some-odd days? That's, that's done. He's done. So he does not have his time. Uh, let's see. What else? Um now they're trying to make it in some schools telling teachers that they can't leave the school building to go and take care of things. But it's your personal time. 
And then, of course, on your personal time, you might get called into the principal's office. Or you might got to call parents. So really, you're working on your time off. So teachers really don't have as much time as you all think we do. So all of that stuff I said, it gives teachers a sense of burnout. Teacher burnout is real. I remember one year I was teaching, and I taught summer school, and I taught ELA, what I teach normally, during the summer. And I was burned out by September the next school year. So when you hear that term, teacher burnout, teacher burnout is more than just the, the frustrating day with uh, distracted students or behavior problem with students or glitchy technology, uh, uh, hostile administrators, absent teachers, and helicopter parents. It's more than just that. It's caused by chronic stress due to the unrelenting workplace demands. And being a teacher, you have extreme, it's an extremely demanding job. Uh, you have 20 to 35 kids dealing with you every day. And if you're lucky and you teach middle school or high school, you might have, what, six classes and you got 25 to 35 kids in seven different classes all day. If you stay after work, you got sports and activities. Then you got to add in their parents. You got to add in the the uh, other teachers. You got to add in the administration. You got to add in the upper administration. And then you got to add in the, uh, uh, what do you call them, the board members too. That's a lot per day dealing with all those different personalities. Teachers bring home a lot. And it's stressful. It is stressful. Now, I'll tell you this. We're stressful where, uh, where I work where – it's like when you go to work, you, 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 you dread opening up your email because then you see your name on that sub rotation. You're like, man, there goes my day. You know, I don't, I don't have time to do anything. You know, we can't do nothing. And, yeah, I use a double negative. <laughs> so uh, the National Education Association defines teacher burnout as a condition in which an educator has exhausted the, person, the personal and professional resources necessary to do the job. That's deep. I'm going to read that again. A condition in which an educator has exhausted the personal and professional resources necessary to, um, to do the job. It's not just about the ability to educate effectively. It's not. The burnout has long-term physical and emotional repercussions. It's so important that we need to recognize those signs and symptoms of this all-too-common condition to protect the mental and physical health. Teachers, we need to not only take care of the personal issues, we gotta take care of the emotional issues too. Because you keep hearing people say, protect your peace. You know, you can't put a price on peace of mind. And if you're just so stressed out, you can't do your job. I mean, this year, this is year 19 for me. And I legit had times where I'm like, you know, I'm so stressed out. I don't know what to do next. And I would just sit there and be like, just taking at least five or ten minutes to get my mind together because stuff happens. And so much stuff has happened during the school year. I'm being very transparent. Yes, it does affect your job. So in order to um, combat teacher burnout, I think we need to know what it looks like to see what teacher burnout is. Because most teachers graduate from college, you know, optimistic, excited, full of promise, you know, ready to change the world. I'm, I'm change the world. I'm inspired. I'm going to go in there and make a difference. You know, because the need to interact with students and staff and parents, teachers generally have their friendly, outgoing disposition. Man, some of the meanest people I've been around this year have been teachers. <laughs> I mean, teachers aren't happy no more. We're not. You know, there are signs that we might be experiencing teacher burnout. You know, it might include stress or feeling irritable or tired all the time. Now, me, now, a close friend of mine has been tired since, man, I say since January, brother been tired. He's, I'm just tired, man, I'm tired. I'm thinking he might have burnout. Um, You know, you also might have sleeping issues, like sleeping too much or sleeping too little. You know, you sleep all day and you're still tired or you can't get to sleep. Uh, you may be sad or overwhelmed when you think about teaching or dreaded, you know, teaching about thinking about teaching. Or maybe you just don't enjoy it anymore. 
or you have physical symptoms like you're gaining too much weight or you're losing too much weight or you don't have any hair your hair starts falling out i mean now not to you know crack a joke but i remember when i was in middle school and there was a teacher she had a bald spot and i'm like wow man maybe she was experiencing burnout you know uh, matter of fact, I think I was working with a teacher one year and she, she was legit pulling her hair out. It was just coming out in clumps because of the burnout. Um, if you notice that the mood surrounding your job is becoming increasingly negative or that your sleeping habits or your eating habits is out of character, you may be suffering from burnout. Chronic stress that stems from burnout can cause both physical and emotional changes. Now, all my teachers that are watching, how many of you all brought home your job? Oh, yeah, you have. You're snapping on your loved ones or you're not being focused on your loved ones. You're staying in your room. You don't want to do anything. Yeah, it's burnout. Now, some common signs of teacher burnout is um, feeling stressed or irritable all the time. Dreading going to work. Like you're going to work and you're like, oh, I'm going to this dang place again. Feeling tired. Having sleep issues, sleeping too much or having insomnia from worry. Feeling sad or overwhelmed when thinking about teaching. Not enjoying teaching. Let's go to that word enjoying. Enjoying is a more permanent thing, right? Have, having fun is temporary. It's based on a happening. So if you're just not even having that, that's a problem. Not in, uh, let's see, gaining or losing weight and unexplained hair loss. No, note, I was already bald before I was teaching. So I don't want you thinking that this is the result of teaching. It's not. <laughs> this gray hair down here, that's the result of teaching. I can tell you what kid and what adult each hair belongs to. <laughs> All right. Now, burnout can cause a teacher's optimism and positive demeanor to change slowly over time. Now note, typically you see a good teacher slowly decline their optimism. But now you're seeing that stuff pop off within the first month. Like, oh, no, nah, heck no. Nah. This ain't for me. These kids is crazy. This administrative staff is not supportive. So you're seeing all of that. Now, it's also a self-esteem thing, too. For example, it may start with a depression of self-esteem due to your students' low standardized scores or your students' low attendance. The key word is low, all right? Then as the weeks and semesters or years go on, other issues like student behavior or lack of support, like we said earlier, or reduced school funding, ding, 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 can pile on and cause more undue stress. No, the key word is undue stress. See, teachers take on stress of people that we don't even need, you know. My, the, the best way to describe a teacher is that brother Atlas holding up the world. That's a teacher. We hold up, not only do we hold up everyone's problems, teachers are blamed for everyone's problems too. We are blamed for everything. If a kid don't come to school, it's your fault. If um, the school fund, the school's not getting funded, it's your fault. If a board member is not elected, it's your fault. If they run out of chicken nuggets, it's your fault. You know, everything is our fault. I mean, we're blamed for everything. We're like, we're like Cinderella. Everything's our fault. Now, poor school funding. In a 2022 study, a whopping 71% of teachers reported that they spend their own money on classroom materials due to a smaller budget. So you, not only are you not paying people what their worth is, you're also having these people who are not getting paid enough using their own money to teach kids. Inadequate school funding requires teachers to dip into their own wallets causing job and financial stress in an already underpaid profession. Now, someone said that in some school districts, school is just a hobby because people who are teachers have, have rich spouses. Now, there are women that I've worked with, and I'm saying women because that's what I've seen, not saying that men are like this, but they would use their teacher's check as, as, as hobby money, and they would go and buy up all kind of fancy stuff for their students and everything, whereas some people who aren't can't afford that are – 
who don't have a rich spouse is cutting from paycheck to paycheck to take care of kids. Um, now, I get it. You got to do what you got to do, but don't throw it up in your face that you can go up and buy up stuff from Amazon every day gum week and person next door can't. That's stressful. Now, you got some teachers who's using their food and gas money or they, are, are money that should be spent on their kids to properly educate other people's kids. That's another thing, too. You got teachers who spend more time with your kids than their own kids. That's, that's stressful. I mean, there's been several times when my son needed me and I couldn't because I'm dealing with other people's kids. And that is one issue why some teachers are like, I can't do this anymore. My child's suffering. COVID-19. In addition to all the normal everyday stressors, the full impact of COVID-19 on teachers has yet to be seen. I mean, we've experienced it, but you all have not seen the, the, the major impact. But I think we're seeing it now because you got people who are just like, you know what, I ain't coming to work. I got a runny nose. I ain't coming to work. Now, note, the thing, the good thing about COVID is it's telling people if you're sick, stay home. But you got people that are abusing that. They are abusing that big time. And you got people that are suffering. Now, I remember during the pandemic, I can count on one hand, it was myself and like a few other teachers. We felt like the Avengers after the Thanos snap. We were the only ones there holding it down. But now, school administrators, you can't be beating up on the teachers who've been riding for you. We're getting tired. We sat there and kept the building open for you due to this COVID-19. But yet and still, you can't support us. That said, an astounding 69% of teachers in 2022 reported needing to spend additional time getting students back on track from learning based on the loss suffered from quarantine. There are kids that are still suffering from being shut down. There are kids that still are having issues reading, still having issues doing mathematical issues, still learning how to be social with other people. These kids are still suffering. Personally, some teachers said we should have went to school all year round when things open back up because there are kids that are still struggling. Now, I don't know about you, teachers. Is your seventh grade group a bunch of hellions? Because that's the group that suffered the most from COVID-19. The seventh grade group, period, across the board is like, they need additional assistance. And... um. I think that there's some parameters that need to get put in place to assist this because all they're going to do is get worse and worse and worse. Next one, unattainable goals for standardized testing. No matter how you feel about standardized testing, you have goals that need to be set. Now, you must have goals that are attainable. Unattainable goals are it's, it's stressful. The pressure of standardized testing has long caused an environment focus more on test scores more than creative learning. As a result, standardized tests often cause significant stress for teachers. So teaching to the test or saying, hey, look, if this, if this test doesn't, if these kids don't score, guess what? It's your fault. So during the pandemic, yeah, I, I appreciate them suspending the test, but that next year, hey, if those kids don't get it, it's your fault. Leading to burnout across the teaching profession because it's adding significant stress. You know, you have teachers doing a Superman job with Spider-Man powers. We can't do that. We can't stop a comet that's hurling towards Earth, shooting webs out of our hands. It's not gonna work. We have to figure this thing out. This is a big one right here. Dealing with difficult parents. Dear parents, we aren't afraid of you. Sincerely, your child's teacher. Now I'll admit, there are some things where it's the teacher's fault. But I mean, since the pandemic, oh man, I mean, these parents have been going hard. I mean, blaming teachers for every little thing. Threatening teachers, threatening their jobs. I mean, sending harassing emails. You name it, we've been through it. With access to a teacher's email, phone, and even classroom management apps, parents today have more opportunities than before to contact their child's teacher. And that's a good thing. We didn't have that back then. 
So my thing is, you know if your kid's passing or failing or whatnot. But unfortunately, difficult parents can drain experienced teachers' energy and affect uh, their self-esteem, potentially leading to burnout. Some parents think that their kid is our only student. It's not. And then you have some uh, parents who try to, to, to bully a teacher or try to use administration to bully a teacher in order to cover up what it is that they're not, they're not doing. Some of these parents may cross parent-teacher boundaries and have unfair expectations to their children's teachers. I mean, no, unfair. I mean, like, for example, if a kid is reading on a third grade level and the teacher's trying all that they can, I mean, parents, be patient. Work with us. You know, you, parents, don't go to parent-teacher conferences and use that time to front out a teacher or, or an administrator, getting up in their face, yelling and cussing and acting a fool. That's not going to help your kid out. Because in the long run, note, if the teacher is the issue, there's ways around that. But also keep in mind, your child's not perfect too. Your child can be a behavior issue. Your child can not turn in an assignment. Your child can just lie. Kids do that. I mean, I guarantee you if you're in your household, a child will, can, will play both ends against the middle. Children are master manipulators. They learn that stuff out the womb. And I'm not saying that to talk bad about your kid, but keep in mind that your child makes mistakes. Also, parents, you make mistakes too. And when it all comes down to it, arguing with that teacher or with that school is not helping your kid. It's not. So, Harassing a teacher on their job in regards to what you feel your child should have that's not unrealistic is taken away from kids whose parents are working with that teacher. I will admit there's been times where one parent has messed it up for several based off of an email or an action. Because although I'm teaching your kid, that's my job and my livelihood. And I will not let anybody negatively affect my job based off some unrealistic standards. Next one, not enough planning time. More than half of teachers in 2022 said their time for planning was significantly impacted due to staff shortages and a host of other reasons. Yeah, like people not coming to work. I remember one time someone said they were sick. And Mr. Walker, I'm glad you sitting down for this. You look on uh, social media and the person is um, doing selfies of them on the plaza kicking it while you in the building watching their class. <laughs> so, you had a too. I have a question? Yeah. All right, all right, we'll go ahead with the question. I think this is when you're talking about spending out of their pocket. It says, can teachers itemize the things that they buy for work on their taxes? It depends on who your tax person is. Now, there is a stipend for teachers for $250. So all my teacher friends, um, go and make sure that you, on your taxes, you have a, a deduction that you can put on there for. I think it's, it was 200 now I think it's 250 now. So you can actually get that back on your taxes. Who's that from? They give the name? No? Okay. All right. If I look it up on the web. Oh, okay, okay. That was a good question. Yes. Uh, oh, hold on. I think we have someone calling in right now. Uh, well, I'm not going to be able to get to that because <laughs> I think it's. All right. Now, next one. Um, well, further on with that, not enough plan time. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes. If teachers don't have enough playing time at school, then they got to bring it home. So if I'm at home doing my plan time, uh, my family's suffering because I'm planning and grading papers now that at home. So right now you're erosing on that work-life balance, which contributes to burnout. I remember uh, a lady I used to work with, she made a good point. She said, boundaries, you have to set up boundaries. You should not let your work life cross over into your home life. Boundaries, teachers, set up those boundaries. It can wait. Feeling unappreciated. 
Unfortunately, teacher salaries do not equal to the stress that we face on the job daily. It's not uncommon for teachers to need to work extra jobs during the weekends or the summers. Because of this, teachers often feel unappreciated and undervalued, eventually leading to burnout. For example, um, teachers have to work sometimes to subsidize their income. If you're a new teacher, you're not getting paid that much, especially if you've got a family. So a lot of us have to go out and do things in order to subsidize our income. Now, teachers, I know there's summer school, and summer school is a good option. Now, if you don't want to do summer school, there are other opportunities for you to um, make money also. Some teachers actually go and work retail. They go work uh, at a library, at a bookstore. My dream job in the summertime is working in a comic book store or a florist. Some teachers go and uh, they do entrepreneurial things, like they make T-shirts or they do yard work. Um, some of them do freedom schools. One opportunity right now, teachers and administrators, check this out. The Boys and Girls Club of uh, Greater Kansas City is hiring right now. They are hiring administrators, teachers certified, teachers substitute, uh, membership coordinators, youth, youth development professionals, and drivers. Plus, you may be eligible for a $500 signing bonus. Now, right now, you see this flyer right next to me. Administrators can make $45 an hour. And when we say administrators, those are people who have the administrative certification, you know, principals, vice principals. Teachers, certified, you can make between $25 and $30 an hour. Teachers, to be a sub, you can make $18 an hour. Membership coordinators and cooks, $16 an hour. Youth development professionals and drivers, $15 an hour. And like we said, you may be eligible for a $500 signing bonus which is good. That's a lot of money. Now, if you're interested in this, please go to the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Kansas City's website and apply because they have places all over. We have Kansas City, North Kansas City, Independence, KCK, and Olathe, and they are looking for kids. I'm sorry, looking for staff. And from what I'm hearing, it's a lot of cool programming opportunities, so check them out. So I also see a note uh, T.L. Williams has up here says, Poets and Ed, and ED, Poets EDU, mm -hmm. at Poets EDU. So I don't know what that's in relation to. Oh, yes. To. Uh, he's saying that Poets EDU may be um, doing some things with the Boys and Girls Club also. So that's an opportunity for teachers also. So if, you want, if you're looking for something outside of being in your school for summer school, definitely hit up the, bros, the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Kansas City. There's locations all over the North KC area, the Metropolitan Kansas City area, Independence, KCK. So check them out. And I know, for example, I know for a fact that that Thornberry location on, um, what is it, was it 43rd Street? 43rd in Cleveland. 43rd in Cleveland. It's a beautiful facility. They have two gyms, full court basketball. They have a pool in there. They have so much for these kids to do. And teachers, if you want to be a part of that, hit them up. Okay. Next one, teacher burnout, lack of autonomy. Autonomy in the curriculum is very important. Autonomy means you control what you do. Your classroom should be your kingdom. You are the king of the queen of your lessons. You disseminate what you, your, your, your lessons based on what you want your kids to learn. Well, it's not like that anymore. The autonomy is done, it's gone. And the lack of autonomy in the curriculum is a significant cause of stress and burnout because some te some schools, excuse me, want teachers to teach according to a cookie cutter type thing. No, I can't teach like the person next door. Good teachers, you should see their personality in their teaching. Surprisingly, almost half of teachers surveyed in 2022 had to change part of all their curriculum. I changed all my curriculum because I know how my kids learn. I know how I teach. And when you come to my classroom, you see Tyrone Gathers Jr. all throughout my lessons. You don't see the person next door or the person in the next building. You see me. Good teachers are themselves. Administrators, if you want to see good teaching, allow teachers to be themselves. Stop giving that scripted curriculum. Okay, let's see how we're doing on time. Cool. All right. Now, I talked about what teacher burnout is. I want to talk about how to avoid burnout. 
So I have six strategies that will help teachers out. And I'm going to try to fly through these with the time I have left. First one, set clear boundaries. We talked about that earlier. Shout out to, uh, you know, a real close friend of mine who, who stated that in our department meeting. It may feel like you have to grade all your papers and respond to every email that comes through as soon as possible. But your, pers but your personal time is equally, if not more important. It's imperative that you set and stick to a schedule, boundaries, okay? You don't have to answer right there on the spot. Give you, tell people that you will respond in 24 to 48 hours. Give yourself time because sometimes a response is not needed right then and there. Think through the response. Setting boundaries will help in a multiple way of factors across life, both professionally and personally. A great way to avoid teacher burnout is by setting clear boundaries between work and personal life. Next one, teachers, find a hobby, okay? If you don't already have a hobby, finding one is well worth the effort. And also, that hobby may put some money in your pocket too. If you look in the corner there, you see a couple of books that I wrote. Hey, my hobby is helping me out. It's helping subsidize my income, writing, editing. So if you need an editor, holler at me. <laughs> if you need someone to help you get published, holler at me. If you want to buy one of my books, holler at me. I'm a teacher. I need the money. <laughs> All right, find a hobby. Whether you like to do crafts or cook or bake or spend time in nature, taking up a hobby can be a best way to self-care. It's also a way that you can um, release, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Release stress and also, you know, subsidize your income, make some money off what you're doing. Number three, create an exercise routine. Exercise is essential. It boosts your natural endorphins and it helps you maintain physical health. And even just for a while, you know, just taking a dog for a walk or stretching or playing frisbee with a kid, that is releasing stress. It's making you feel better. Um, you know, do a workout class or do yoga from the comfort of your own home or you know, jog or run, that helps alleviate burnout symptoms. Next, reclaim your weekends. It doesn't make you a better teacher if you spend all weekend working and preparing. No, take back your weekends and recharge. Forget that you even have a job. Be you. Don't be the teacher. Don't be the principal. Be you. Use that time to explore. Use that time to recharge. Get refreshed, rest, and ready to teach. You know, get your sleep. You know what? Sleep all weekend. I got homework for you, teachers. Pick a weekend to sleep all weekend. Stay in bed and watch Netflix. Eat the foods you want to eat. Go to the places where you want to go. I did that last weekend. I loved it. I loved it. That's why my skin is so fresh and vibrant. <laughs> <laughs> Take vacation days. I mean, don't sit up here and be like, oh, yeah, I got all this time saved up. So take those days. Take them. Vacations are important. It's a way to reset mentally and physically. Take a sick day. Take a mental health day. Cost can be a barrier, but a vacation doesn't have to be expensive. For example, you can take a vacation day and pamper yourself. Go to a spa or do a staycation. Go to a hotel and just eat junk food all day. Or just stay home and turn your phone off. You know, watching a good movie can be a vacation, too. And last, don't work during your vacation. It's great that you plan time away from the classroom, but this is the first step. Don't check your work email. Don't answer phone calls from your job. Forget that you have a job. I tell people during the summer, they say, hey, man, do you, do you, uh, do you teach? Yeah, I'm not teaching now. I'm me. Find time to be you. Rediscover who you are, what you like. It's like being in a, in, a, in, a, in a relationship that's not good. I need time to figure me out. It's not you. It's me. Um, let's see. Resist the urge to keep working and, uh, and checking everything on your plan time off. Also, to get the most benefits from your vacation, use the time as it was intended. Rest and relax, not to catch up on lesson planning and grading. 
Nah, it, it'll be there when you get back. Now, in closing, knowing if it's time to quit teaching. Now, some people, you may got to hang it up. I get that. I've been there. I've actually thought about that. If you're considering quitting the teaching profession, you're not alone. Almost half of the public schools in the United States currently reported teacher vacancies. Vacancies. vacancies sorry. <clears throat> According to a survey by the National Center for Education Statistics, NCES, while these vacancies can be due to various factors, teacher burnout is likely to blame for many. Deciding to call it quits on a profession you likely were passionate about at one time can be incredibly difficult. It's like a divorce. Sometimes you've given all you can, all your mental, all your physical health. Now it's a priority. You gave it all. It's, it's done now. How do you know when enough is enough? Now here's some warning signs that it might be time to consider taking a break from teaching. First, your personal life is suffering because of job stress. Next, your mental or physical health is negatively affected. Your job causes more exhaustion than excitement. You know that moving districts or switching grades won't help. And you are financially struggling with your salary. Teachers, you have to protect your peace. Do all you can to establish peace in your profession. Set up those boundaries. However, if your boundaries keep getting pushed in to the fact that you're getting boxed in, it might be time to find the door and go. Because when, when it's all said and done, you are what is important. If you're not together, your children in your classroom won't be together. If you're not together, your children at home won't be together. Take this time during the summer and reflect and refresh to figure out what's best for you in order to revive your profession or restart somewhere else. You're watching The Source of Inkwell with Tyrone Gathers. In the inkwell, ink overflows. And just like it, let it stay permanent. See you next week. Just like it.